Must be playoff hockey, because there are a lot of people here already. Oh, support staff for both sides, yeah, incredible.
Well, the scene is set as the Connecticut Junior Rangers down to our broadcast left and Toronto Pro Hockey down to our broadcast right along with full groves of fans here in West Edmonton Mall as we get set for the 2011 birth year playoffs. The third seed Connecticut, four and one, taking on the sixth seed Toronto Pro Hockey, three and two. Of course, if you look up on the banners lined across the top row around the railing of the rink, it Stand is Connecticut. Standing room only. <laughs> Standing room only around the banister and a 2019 championship one that says Connecticut Junior Rangers on it. They're yep. trying to look for back-to-back -back championships. Absolutely. They are geared to go, and I'm sure the parents are just as geared to go because they are up there. They got all their noisemakers and everything else ready to go. I don't think I've seen a game this uh, busy this early in the morning here, this is the first time. Must be playoff hockey. I'm trying to get a the look. The refs are, oh, the refs, they're giving us their love already. I love it. The refs have just been unbelievable this tournament. They've been out here. I think they are on a two-game uh, rotation, I think. Sometimes they 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 get convinced to come out three games, but, uh, hey, they're looking good out there. Yeah, fantastic job by the officiating crew. Taking a look now, your starting netminders for Toronto Pro Hockey. It's going to be Brody Gerwins getting the start, number 29. So he's played two games and has a 337 goals against average with a 788 save percentage. Stopped 26 of 33 saves. And on the other side, it's James Hickey for the Connecticut Junior Rangers. A 2 and 1 record with a 118 goals against average and a 907 save percentage. He's stopped 38 of 43, or pardon me, 39 of 43 shots faced so far for the Rangers. Well, this will be new for me. I have not seen Brody Grinwitz. Uh, in net yet. It's always been Goldie in net, so this will be an uh, interesting uh, watch for you. Teams come to center ice. It's Jack Cross and his seven points on the tournament taking the draw against Brady Riley. As the defending champions trying to knock it in the attacking zone, Pogi up for Lettieri, firing Grant on the wall, quickly turned around, and you could already see the speed from Jack Cross. One goal, six assists for number four on Connecticut. He's got the puck right now around the net. Twisting, turning, trying to shake off the defense. Into the corner. Now gets double teamed onside the wall. Grant's in there, I believe. The other one is Brady Riley. Puck back towards the line. Walking in is Blanchard. He'll fire a shot. That one tipped. Look at that. Right off the bat, we are just going 100 mile an hour. That is exciting hockey. There is no letting up from both these teams. Yeah, seven points for Jack Cross, and you saw it there. Once he had the puck, he skated right by about three guys. Tons of speed for number four on Connecticut. Face off now to the blocker hand side of Gerwins. Back towards the point. Trying to shovel it down the wall is Connecticut. Quick turn over there is almost bringing it back out was Gianni Frasca. Talk about a guy with speed. Watch 86 yep. for Toronto. Frasca has always been one to watch. Mark, or pardon me, Gabe Stone. Unable to get that out. Now he'll meet it along the near side. Great poke around the defense. Gabe Stone going to take it down lane one-on-one. -on -one. Stone shoots, trying to go across the grain. That one nicely blocked by Austin Jessup. In towards the corner. A little bit of a collision there. No calls. We've played the first minute and five seconds. Here in the first playoff game of the Brick Invitational 2011 boards. Gabe Stone to the point. There's you trying to hold the puck in. Does the first time. Second chance cleared out by Jackson Liao. Back in for Hatch. Hatch now the defenseman. Long distance There's wrist a... shot into the glove and the big save by Hickey. Yep. The first shot of uh, the goaltender for the uh, Rangers there. So he's got the dust shaken off. He's ready to go. It's always that first shot that is always the one that uh, is the most scariest for goalies. Especially if it takes some time to get to them Absolutely. when they're sitting there for a few minutes. So that Absolutely. one, Absolutely. about a minute and 25 seconds in as the Rangers trying to get oh. the break out. This one up and out of play, a little souvenir for one of the fans there yeah. in Connecticut. Yeah, dad saved the youngster there. <laughs> Quick hands, you must be a goaltender. You gotta have your head on a swivel here in West Edmonton Mall, of course, if you're, if you're in the standing section yes. along the railing. What a great place to call a hockey game and to watch <laughs> a hockey is. game. It is, absolutely it is. Offensive zone draw for Toronto Pro Hockey. There's Latanzio, or Lettieri, pardon me. Along the blue line, trying to hold that in is Brooks. Brooks will fire it right back in. Hickey out from behind his net. Didn't see that too often yesterday no. with puck handling goaltenders coming out, yep. but you saw it right there first time. We'll keep an eye on if James Hickey likes to get out and help his defense yep. get the puck out of the zone. Yeah, I noticed that a lot too, that uh, these goaltenders are a little bit uh, worried about coming out and playing the puck, but I think now they're getting a little bit more comfortable. 
Here's Lettieri on it in neutral zone. Will spin off the check. Back for Toronto. One of the players lost his stick. Nico Hughes, maybe a lane towards the net. Fires looking up top and just a high riser over the net. Good start for Toronto Pro Hockey. That started off uh, being a Rangers game for the first three seconds. Now Toronto's turned it around and spending a lot of his own time. Back for it goes Zebulon Zollinger. They bounced off the wall. Going to try to get a break. It's Leo. Five-hole shot and the wicket's closed. Stopped by Gerwins. Best opportunity of the night there for Connecticut. Yeah, Gerwins shut the door on that one. Now he's got his first shot off the off the board, so he's good to go. Speaking of another talented player, how about Jackson Leal, Connecticut? Five goals in five games here for the defending champions. Added an assist as well. Second leading scorer on the team. Yeah, he's put himself in good positions to, to get those points, and that's what it takes. Here's Perez. Threw it in towards the high slot. Frasca now relocates it. His shot towards the net had traffic. It missed Gabe Stone, who picks up the puck. He's a handful to deal with. Stone now trying to shake off the defenseman. Still with it, tying up a stick. Back for it there was Zollinger. Good play to get it off of Stone. Held it. line. No, it's not. It's going to be called offside as it just creeped out of the zone. And now rolls all the way back for Hacks to grab it. 8.35 left in the first period. A scoreless first period between Toronto and Connecticut. I haven't seen a lot of uh, deflections yet. Uh, there's a few teams that are trying to do it, but uh, in general, I have not seen that a lot. Scrum and Sue's into the corner. Latanzio's in there. Three for each team. Knocked around the net. Hatch back after it for pro hockey. Nice pass up leading Brooks. Brooks is going to bring part of me. That's Hunter Be or Beckham Hunter around the net. Looking for a read. Bank pass off the wall to Bogey. He'll send it back in around. Frasca finds it. Cuts back towards. Got a little impeded with there. Play resumes. Out towards center ice. D to D play, Bogey back for it, rolls off his stick, he's got some pressure now. As Maryland down on him is Cole Colosimo. Brooks will knock it to the wall. Scooped up by Brody Grant. Now a turnover, chance here for Connecticut as they go wide, quick wrist shot and a good looking one to say Beautiful, the least. beautiful glove save. That was, a, that was what I like to call a pretty save. Hey, he was stretched out, glove was out. Good job on Flash the leather. Yep. And that was Brody Grinwist that I have not seen yet, so I'm impressed so far. And Grayson McKenzie it was who fired that shot. I'm a, go I'm a goalie parent myself, so you'll tend to find me talking about the goalies quite a bit. No problem about that. Severo rattles it back in. Going back for it is Austin Petty. Changes directions up for Brooks. Another near turnover is almost jumping on. That one was Leiden. Nice dump in there. Just professional looking hockey from some smaller players. Oh, the hockey IQ already Just at this unreal. age is off the charts. Yep, unreal. They know what's going on and where to put that puck. Trying to hold it at the blue line, doing so. Good play by Nico Hughes. It's around the wall. Now scooping it up, Beckham Hunter. He's got a couple defenders on him. Here comes the support staff, trying to jam it back out in front, I believe, was Brooks. Hit a leg. Now Connecticut will shovel it back up along the boards. Out to center ice. You turn Look at over. that. Leiden going to try to get a step. Cuts back in. Almost lost possession. Slides it in front. Looking to connect there with Preston Herbert. What back a, comes Toronto. What a great opportunity there that he created. Leiden again trying to get towards it. Got an egg, slipped down. 6.28 left in the first. A scoreless between Connecticut and Toronto. Back in towards pro hockey zone. There's you. Hard crisp pass. Bounces off the stick of Frasca. Hatch back for it. He'll lead it up ice. Gabe Stones there. Frasca will move it around. Pokes it into an open wing. Trying to race onto it was Justin Corey for Connecticut. Back in. Frasca, good stick lift on Corey, but he sticks with it. Corey still with it. Great work down the right wing. Finally, here comes over Latanzio and Hatch to knock it free from Corey. At the line, saved by Austin Jessup. Second opportunity. Jessup, another great job holding. He'll rattle down the right. Throw it around the net. Scooped up. Two on one, gets taken down. Latanzio after it. He can't find the loose puck. Great. Secured there by Justin Corey. Rangers doing an excellent job of controlling that puck in the offensive zone. And look Wrap. at that opportunity. Wrap around chance and a pad down from Gerwins. 
And that was Blanchard with the opportunity, but still scoreless. Both goaltenders standing yep. strong. Shots on goal, three to one, favoring Connecticut. Yeah, Gerwis has had a bit, uh, a couple more shots on him, but uh, he's holding strong in there. Rangers doing an excellent job controlling that puck for the last minute or so. Face off again in the, uh, and another cover up by Gerwis. Yeah, right idea by Gerwins there is sees that puck pop right towards his crease. And make sure he just puts the glove down on it. Sorry, that's Brody Grinwis. Grinwis, my apologies. Uh, my apologies too. Brody Grinwis in net. I think we both checked at the same time. Yeah, the we roster. did. Like, yeah. Are we getting this name yeah, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing with 17 teams. Any, it's tough. any family listening back home, and if we are they pronouncing know. it wrong, but please comment along Absolutely. on the stream and, and let us know. We'll, we'll try we to correct ourselves. Correct but, but Grinwis, yes, a couple four saves now on the night. Yep. Doing a great job. A little bit maybe of a trip there as a stick underneath the leg, or as Reed Bogey may have got away with one back around the net. Here's Lettieri. Francesco Lettieri along the boards. And a little bit of a collision there, and the referees are going to let this go. Here's Cross. Gets stripped of the puck, and now a penalty is coming up, and I believe it's going to Toronto Pro Hockey for cross checking. We'll see who the guilty party is. It's Reed Pogey to the box. Pogey. Cross checking, and Connecticut heading to the power play. Power play brought to you by Kachuk. Advisory group at Scotia Wealth Management, first one of the game. Speaking of the officials, uh, I really enjoy watching these guys. Uh, they will, they'll often look up at us to see if they've made the right call. It seems like I know they know in their mind they've made the right call, but but they'll give that quick glance that okay, I know you're filming. Did I make the right call? <laughs> I don't think we're changing their mind if we think otherwise. No, no, not at all. But I just think it's. Uh, Pretty awesome that they include us. 4.35 left in the first period. It's the first power play for either team. It's on for Connecticut. As with it is Cross. He'll go up to the D. Across for Severo. Doesn't like the lane towards the net. He's watched in front nicely by Frasca. Back across. Long shot, slap shot up and over the net. There's a little bit too much and too much loft on it. And that was Jackson Liao trying to tee one up. Now Latanzio back the other way. Stripped off the puck by Charlie Severo. He'll lead up ice. Jackson Liao wanted to swipe it into the middle. Cut off and brought back to the wall. Toronto looking to get it out of the zone. Unable to. Held by Severo. Now hard rim around the boards. This one to the blue line. Another great job holding that one in. And that was Preston Herbert. Finally nice clear. Toronto does. 55 seconds gone now on the first power play of the game. As once again, there you see James Hickey coming out to play it. He's yep. not afraid. He's not afraid at all. Good puck handling goaltender. It's a good Cross show. Cross trying to go inside and out around Hatch. He does. He shoots. And Grinwis makes another big save on Jack Cross. Just going back to uh, James Hickey before we touch on that opportunity for Cross. It's so nice for a defenseman to have a goaltender that yep. can handle the puck and do it well because it just helps with the communication and the breakout and getting the flow going back the other way. And we've seen it twice now from Hickey. It's a sixth player on the Absolutely. ice. Absolutely. Third defenseman, pretty much. Yep. On towards the near side boards. Grayson McKenzie. Now up top, Blanchard. Cross D to D. Down the wall. Back up. It's Connecticut. Good puck moving here. Blanchard now near side. Looking for Reed. He's got some pressure. Finds in towards the middle. Shot. It's redirected. Rebound. Scores. Look at that. Grayson McKenzie right on the spot. And the puck bounced to him into the back of the net, a power play goal. And the defending champion, Connecticut Junior Rangers, have a one nothing lead. Grinowitz with an excellent first save, but Connecticut was there to tap in the rebound and make it a one nothing score for Connecticut. Not surprising though, because Connecticut has been basically dominating the game for the last little bit. Well, their support staff over there, all the fans are got energized after the goal. If it is Grayson McKenzie's, I do believe it was 17 on the far side. It's his second goal of the tournament. Came into this with one goal and one assist. Now Justin Corey going to bounce it into the corner. Walks by Pogi. 
Pogi takes him down. Blanchard trying to walk it back up. Good little stick flip there by Pogi as he feeds Hughes. Now across to Perez. Great move to walk around Blanchard. Salvador Perez takes a shot. That one off a shin pad. Now a centering chance. It's Toronto looking to hold. Pogi back down the wall. There's Santino Perez. After the puck, Hughes as well. It'll be carried out by Connecticut. Toronto really working hard on trying to even things up again. Oh, there is ref. Gets his head in the way. Hopefully he's all right. Well, they're trying to stifle oh. momentum before Connecticut can yes. really take advantage of it. Trying to get that most important shift after scoring a goal is the next one, obviously. And Toronto, great shift there by Perez down low. And Nico Hughes as well. Absolutely. Toronto really put on the pressure, and they just went full bore towards Hickey, but they were unable to get a half-decent shot. And right. Just one shot on net so far for Toronto Pro yep. Hockey. Going to have to try to muster up a little more offense. A little bit more. Just credit to Connecticut. They're keeping them to the outside and not really letting them have any sustained offensive time. Gabe Stone going to try to change that. He barrels his way in. One of the bigger kids in the tournament, number 10 for Toronto. Frasca, good little poke check. Yep. Stone comes in, two on three into the scrum. And he moved three, Blanchard. Uh, stops up, or pardon me. And Zebulon Zollinger. And this one just clears the zone. Now McKenzie, who we believe was the goal scorer, trying to work it back into the zone. Still waiting to hear on that officially. Official call. Frasca, I tell you, he, he is just one just machine out there. Yeah, every yeah. every play that there that, that something's happening, Frasca's in on it. It's like the the puck has a magnet to him, and it just seems to be always around the play and creating something. And that's what Toronto needs right now. Perfect faceoff win by Jack Cross. Connecticut goes D to D to the far side of the ice and sends it in. Bogey back for it. Watched in and taken down by Preston Herbert. Severo at the line. It'll be cleared free. Working it back the other way is Riley. Grady Riley couldn't get deep into the zone. Now another poke check. It's Brooks. He'll lift the backhand down low in front of the net of Hickey. Quickly turned away by Tyler Wood. Wood will flip it up to center ice. Bouncing cross trying to squeeze between two pro hockey players. And Brooks is the one to able to steer him off the lane of the puck. Back out to center ice. Nice clear there from Toronto to get out of danger for a bit. Severo will roll it back in. Cross tied up. Hughes waiting outside the scrum. Riley goes in. Two for each team. 45 seconds remaining here in the first. It's 1 0 for Connecticut. At the line was Del Giacco. He gets a little help coming there from Huddiston. Widens also in the play. Gula now for Toronto. Great pass outside the zone. Gets to center, sends it in, but it hits the body there of Austin Jessup. Jessup will keep it moving, just throw it back out to center. Only one there is Petty. Petty drives it right back in. Long distance shot, never made its way towards Neta Hickey. Perez though jumps on it. Perez trying to find a little bit of room. Got poke check back out to center. Toronto will find it, send it back in. Oh, Nine dangerous Nine seconds bounce. left as that one nearly fooled James Hickey, but he was able to get the body in front of it. Peden, Petty now another shot. One last long away. shot. And the final seconds will roll off the board. Seven to one, the shots on goal. I think a couple of those might get ticked on at the last second for Toronto Pro Hockey, but nonetheless, it's Connecticut with that one nothing lead after one period. Yeah, Toronto sure poured it on for the next little bit. And uh, they they did look like they got a couple more shots up, but they haven't uh, put them up on the clock as shots, so they may have just been wide. So we're gonna get a look here at the goal by McKenzie. The only goal in that first period on the power play. Great little pass, we'll see the re-kick and Unfortunately for Grinwis, he just couldn't kick that far away enough yep. from the net, and it went right onto the stick there of McKenzie and fired it in the back door. Yeah, Grinwis with the... Can we get it one more time? Grinwis with the first save. Nice, nice pad save there, but yeah, it just, just happened to go right into the stick of... Uh, You'll see Sebastian Blanchard starts it up, passes it into the slot, and then just gets it right towards the net. And nothing Grinwis could do at that point. Nope. Wide open net for the rebound, and Connecticut won nothing. Yep. Well, his job is to is to make that first save, and hopefully the defense can be stepping in and clearing the puck away. But we have one of the uh, rink guys crossing the ice there. But uh, 
Teams will switch sides. Toronto Pro Hockey. Down to our broadcast left. <clears throat> Connecticut now to the right. Yeah, Toronto sure sure pouring it on there at, at the end, trying to even things up. But uh, unfortunately, uh, could not make anything happen. But here we got their second period starting and see what happens. Latanzio on the drop. And he'll take it against Leiden. Or pardon me, it was Jackson Liao on the faceoff. Now Frasca going to try to generate something for Toronto here in the middle frame. one nothing to score. Gabe Stone works it towards the front of the net. Poke checked away by Hickey. Jackson Liao in his own zone, deep in his zone, trying to clear it. Blanchard. Trying to get control. I had a little mic issue there. Almost pulled it right off my face. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> Out for Pogi at the blue line. Now Frasca. Frasca has some room. Going to try to walk in. Fires a shot. Oh. Great block by Blanchard. Yep. Sacrificing his body, and that's what it takes these days. It's. Yeah, you've seen that all tournament all long, tournament. too. As Justin Corey, believe that puck caught one of the players hanging over the bench, and we're going to stop at your plate. Yeah, they're uh, taking a cue, I think, from, from maybe Tampa Bay to sacrificing their body, oh, you gotta. getting their getting their leg down, or but they just got to remember, don't turn around. <laughs> There's the faceoff, almost brought back into the attacking zone, sent away by Fairback. There's Toronto Pro Hockey back behind the net, Gula, Pogi up the boards, Gula. Look at the speed of some of those kids. Oh, they can fly. Here's Jess up on it. Turns it away from the attack. Beckham Hunter driving in down the right. Jess up. Another good play to knock it free from Hunter. Found now by Del Giaco. He'll use his net for some separation as Del Giaco once again tucks back. Didn't like the read up ice. Now he may be in some trouble here as he... Runs into a couple pro hockey players. Gula at the line, fires it, couldn't get it through. Blocked in front again. Gula will regain it at center ice. Finds Perez. Here comes Santino Perez. Two goals in the tournament. Will pivot towards the slot. And then unable to get it free from Jessup as kept that stick in the shooting lane to knock it wide. Jessup has sure been a dominating defenseman out there. He yeah. is just not letting anyone get near Hickey at all. Yeah, he's been shut down throughout the first 14 minutes. Anyone near him is just... Nope, they're not getting by. And that is what every goaltender loves <laughs> when they got a defenseman like that. A big kid too, so... Yeah, big kid. Which hasn't affected his mobility at all. Nope. So he can move, he's strong. Yeah, you see him twisting, turning, yeah. changing directions. As Riley will take the draw for Toronto Pro Hockey. Offensive zone draw. We played two minutes, four seconds here in the second period. We have four great hockey games for you today along ASTV here at the Brick Invitational. Here comes Leiden. A long wrist shot off the chest. Big rebound pops up of Grinwis. Grinwis wasn't quite sure where, where that was. Riley coming back. He gets free. Riley in front off a leg. And once again, oh. one of the referees took a tumble that time. He's smiling. He's okay. Pops Hopefully up. He's all right. <laughs> but another look for Toronto there. They just couldn't find the last effort to get the shot on net of Hickey. Yeah, they're getting in the zone. Yeah. They're just not getting close to that goaltender. And that's the de strong defense. Frasca gets taken down. No call. And this puck ends up up and out of play. In towards the Toronto Pro Hockey bench. Just a reminder to stick with us because at 12.50, we're going to have the four against five seed, which is Team Brick Alberta, of course, the host team, taking on the Toronto Bulldogs. And that's a rematch of yesterday of a game that went into overtime. Yep. That was a fantastic effort and fantastic showing between those two. You want to hear a crowd go wild, that will be the one. It actually went down to two on two overtime. They did five minutes of three on three and... Went to two on two, two on no two. one scored. It was exciting it to watch. It yeah. was, I love those games. As Blanchard throwing it in. I'm not sure if we're gonna have that uh, liberty in these games. The overtime system kind of changes oh, for the does, playoffs. Does yeah, it? we'll update you on what it looks like in the next stop which you play is Frasca now outside the zone, looking for Gabe Stone a little behind him. He's gonna hug back and 
Land on the stick of wood. He'll turn it up by ice. Great job by Lettieri holding the zone. Now Lettieri trying to hold it in a second time. Cleared out. That by Jackson Liao. Blanchard, wrist shot wide. In goes Corey. But he got laid on by Perez. Back in his zone. Perez up for Hunter. Back come Hunter. Threw it off the stick of Fairback. That lands on top of Hickey. Almost played it, but right on front there was Hunter trying to jump on a loose puck. Those slow ones coming in are dangerous. Mm -hmm. You don't know whether to jump on them or play them. Gula will fire right back in on net. Hickey, he'll elect to play this out to the defenseman in Del Giaco. Once again, twist, turns. He's going to run into Brooks, though. Or pardon me, that's Hughes. Knocks it back into the corner. Steered up the wall for Connecticut. Now Blanchard out. Oh, pardon me, that's McKenzie. Got the goal earlier. Down the right wing. Stops up into the corner. Playing it back to the point. Jessup walks into a slap shot. Stopped by Grinwis. Kaboom. What a missile he put in there. He can shoot it too, apparently. Backdoor pass as this one hops over the stick of McKenzie. Now it's going to be a battle for it on the near side. McKenzie's in there. Hughes will find it. Send it out. Jessup will start things up in his own zone. Near side to Fairback. He'll lay it in. Good dump in. And look at the speed of Connecticut getting in there to get control again. That's Jack Cross, the first one in on the attack. Toronto, though, good job to navigate it away from the pressure down low. And now they find it back out to center ice with Perez. Yep. 7.08 left here in the second period. 1-0, a close game here. Shots 9-3 now for Connecticut. Yeah, two of those three of, were those slow ones coming into Hickey. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he stays, uh, is able to stay concentrated and limber. Here comes Cross, near side pass, Leiden trying to connect it across and opportunity there. As I believe Preston Herbert jumped into the play. Yes, it was, just couldn't get the shot, it was blocked. Now Stone, stripped of the puck by Leiden. He's been strong today as well. Back around the net. Playing it up ice. Frasca couldn't clear. Good shift here from Connecticut. They're trying to get a change. They will. Zollinger, though, had the puck slip under him. And now it's forced out by Stone. Zollinger is going to get it back. Roll a backhand just briefly in. Turned around by Hatch. Frasca may have a step around Zollinger. He does. Now down the left wing. Stone towards the net. Frasca couldn't get it there as he was poke checked by Severo. Charlie Severo after a loose puck. Up the wing to Blanchard. He'll knock it around the defenseman in Pogi. After it, man in front. The fans calling for the pass to come, but good defensive play. It was Hatch on the back check. Now Hatch will work it back up through center. Stripped. Back out. Corey's after it. But Tanzio will knock it free. Hunter couldn't get to it. Breaking it in was Jackson Liao looking for his sixth goal of the tournament. And here comes Toronto Pro Hockey, a two on two. Latanzio in the slot. Fired by Hughes, that one didn't miss by much. Not by much at all. It was coming right into that side post. And Hunter and McKenzie got all tied up, went down. Lettieri up the wall. That one held in by Huniston. Yu, the defenseman for Toronto, hemmed up along the back wall. Tron on him is Calissimo. Toronto getting a little bunched up, I've noticed, in, in corners. They Lettieri again, up the wall. Hunter trying to lift the stick, and he checks off the boards towards the front of the net. Fans wanted the call, and not getting one here. We're going to keep it five on five. I was looking for his second goal of the game was McKenzie, but a little impeded with there, didn't get a shot off. Yep. And Grinwis there just covering up the puck and saying, okay, we need a break and play here. <laughs> let's, let's get some fresh legs out. A little bit scrambly there for the last bit. As I said, Toronto got a little bit bunched up in the corners, and I know they all want to get to the puck, but. 4.55 left here in the second period. one nothing still for Connecticut as the play around the left wing wall. Knocked free by Preston Herbert, now sent in. Grant is the four checker after it. Back for it is Del, or pardon me, Del Giaco. Del Giaco up the wall. Hard off the boards. Was Peter Leiden following it up is Jack Cross. One step around the defenseman. Cross now backhand shot stopped by Grinwis. Toronto back off the glass. Leiden will send it in. After it goes Cross. 
into the corner, twists back down low, around the net, Blanchard. Trying to find someone in front, finds Cross back behind the net. Good effort by both Cross, and it was Herbert down low. As this one bounced off the leg of Leiden and back out to center ice where Jessup will pick it up. Jessup runs into Brooks, but does get it out. Cross now, far side pass to Liao. Looking for Leiden, straddling the blue line. Jessup, another Look at blast, that. and that one blocked <laughs> that in front. Ball. Here's a breakaway for Frasca, trying to gobble the puck back up, shoots, it just missed on the far side. I thought that was going in. I thought it was. Had a little bit of trouble handling it, entering the zone, which kind of slowed down the breakaway opportunity and forced to take the shot before the defenseman could catch up. Jackson Liao the other way, but on it is going to be Ryan Lozon. That was the opportunity Frasca was waiting for. That's his kind of opportunity. But like you said, just got tied up a little bit. Just could not get in there with the speed and accuracy you wanted. Latanzio runs in the big Sebastian Blanchard. As this one now, secured by Blanchard. Leaves it at the point for Zollinger. A shot blocked by Latanzio. Back comes Toronto. Here goes Hatch. Oh. Oh. High off the glass. That was close to you, man. I think that was my eyebrows that kind of got a little black rubber on them. That was pretty close. 255. <laughs> yeah, you got to be alert here in the press box. Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of rubber, though, did you see that missile that Jessup let oh, go yeah. and dropped a uh, Toronto player? Luckily, the Toronto player, I think, had some padding in the way, which which is very fortunate for him. And Jessup can fire. We've seen that now three times throughout this game as it's played back out. Pogi trying to center it to Hunter. Turn back around. Lead pass. Chipped by Blanchard. D to D as Gula moves it to Petty. Petty now up boards, but Blanchard strips it from Hughes. Hughes gets it back. Three on two developing. Hughes to Hunter. Hunter shoots. Rebound chance. And they couldn't connect with it. Knocked back into the corner. But Toronto finding opportunities here late in the second period, trying to tie this game up at one. That was the first really, really good shot that uh, Hickey had to face, and he stepped up and kept it out. Back in center, Wood. He's got Perez on him. Nice the backhand inside the Toronto zone. Petty across to Gula. He'll take a look. Make sure the read is right. Nice play to sidestep. Jack Cross looking for Grant. Missed the pass. Jess up back around the boards. That's Connecticut. They'll send it all the way down. Not going to have enough for icing, though. Yeah. So hustling back for its bogey. Up the wing. Sent out to center. Stuffing it there. Connecticut sending it in. Cross going after it. Trying to meet him back is Gula. I believe they are going to call this one icing. Okay. Yep. As Connecticut not quite at center ice before they sent it in. Cross looked like he was going to beat it out, but yep. no hybrid icing here in the tournament. As soon as it crosses the red line, they call it. Yeah, they call it. Yep, and that's and that's good on them. No, it's uh, like I said, the officials are doing a great job here. They're calling the right calls. An offensive zone draw coming for Toronto. 1.38 left in the second period. As it'll be found by Frasca. He gets knocked down to the ice. Toronto fans wanted the call. It will remain five on five. Back at center ice. Lettieri sends it in. Del Giaco quickly out. Lied in. Almost mishandled yeah. it, but played it out to center. Lettieri back down the right wing. Grant. Couldn't get a shot. He was stripped by Leiden with plenty of speed, trying to go inside and out around Pogi. Nothing happening there. Just couldn't get through the three, the three uh, Toronto players there, but good effort. Jessup. Jessup once again getting his body in the way and causing havoc. <laughs> now it's picked up by Gabe Stone, but he gets poke checked by Leiden. Here Back we go. to Toronto. Fresca and Stone trying to create it. Fresca shoots. Stopped by Hickey. Rebound chance and falls on the puck. Does James Hickey. For a moment there, he looked behind him, but and that he puck thought, stayed in front of the goal line. Yep, Frasca again with those quick feet and good hands. I know he was looking to do one more move there, but defenseman got in the way and forced a shot right into the chest plate of Hickey. But yeah, it was that drop down. Hickey didn't know where it was. Well, the offense has been coming courtesy of Frasca in this game for Toronto, but they haven't been able to beat James Hickey. Nope. Five shots, five saves. 
Hatch, he'll let one ride. That one blocked in front, steered away by Severo. If that would have made its way through, that would have been close. I, I think it would have hit the post, but it was close to getting that far corner. Frasca now on the board. Latanzio up towards the point. Petty across to Hatch. Hatch, another shot. That went up and over the net. Stone tried to redirect it. Might have been a high stick if he did. Yep. Never touched it. Hatch, a shot. Oh. Stopped by Hickey. Rebound chance. Frasca throws it towards the net. As over the course of the second period, Toronto has really leaned the ice in their favor. Frasca, another drive, and Hickey, a couple saves, puts the glove on it. But Toronto's finding their groove here, and great coaching by Lindsey Hofford, along with assistant coach Anthony Dyke and Maddox Reichel, because something's pivoted here in the second period for Absolutely. Toronto. Absolutely. Something has, has changed either on the bench or, or just with the kids themselves, but the game has changed. Toronto has been in the offensive zone way more than mm -hmm. uh, Connecticut has. Whereas the first period, it was the opposite. Perez on the face off against McKenzie. Perez will win it. Great pass to the point for Hatch. Hatch shoots, hits the shin pad. Still trying to find it is Toronto and another save by Hickey as time expires. At the front of the door, I believe Callum Brooks got that final shot off. Yep. But just like that, it was 10-2 it was the shots at one point. Now it's 10-9. So 10-9, just like that. Toronto putting it on. Hatch tried to get uh, thread the needle through through the, one of the last two shots there. And yeah, you got to give credit to James Hickey, who came into this game with a 118 goals against average and a 907 save percentage. So over the course of their five games before, four of which Hickey played in, uh, it, it's tough. It's been tough to beat him. Yep. Under two goals a game, he's averaging. Toronto needs one to tie it up, and they got 15 remaining to do so. Yep. But the uh, way they finish that period is the way they need to play the entire third. Yeah, right from start to finish. And and I noticed in the uh, even in the first period, they they were kind of ho hum during the first period. Not that they were doing bad, but just Connecticut was was dominating. And then in the very last minute, two minutes of the first period, Toronto came alive. And then that's when we saw a lot more pressure being put on Hickey. And kind of the same story for the uh, second period here, although Toronto in general just has picked up the game. Well, it's one nothing for Connecticut after two periods of play. Shots on goal, 10-9 for Connecticut. And the goal coming, his second of the tournament for Grayson McKenzie. one nothing, and 15 minutes remain. We'll take a break and we'll come back with a period scoring summary next. Right here at the Brick Invitational at West Edmonton Mall on Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mountain Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment
Woods Hotel, we have you and your family's comfort in mind. Relax in one of our 16 suites featuring king or queen size beds and 36 inch TVs. Suites also include a mini fridge and other kitchen appliances to make your stay as comfortable as possible. During your stay in Pilot Mound, visit Wiser's Restaurant, our attached family-friendly restaurant and bar. It is the perfect location to host group meals, dine with the family, or unwind after a hockey game. Come in and meet our friendly staff offering daily specials on food and drinks, wing night Wednesdays, buffet Fridays, and multiple TVs to watch the game. Wiser's is the place to be. Collins Hotel and Wiser's Restaurant and Bar, located across the street from Blackjack Stewart Arena off Highway 3 in Pilot Mound. Back here in West Edmonton Mall for the third and final period between the Connecticut Junior Rangers and the Toronto Pro Hockey, Rory McGoran, along with Mark Kincaid. It's a close game. It's 1-0 for Connecticut as we will start with that goal. My apologies to the families back home. Justin Corey, the goal scorer, not Grayson McKenzie. So he gets his second goal of the tournament, and it's the lone goal so far as we get another look on the power play. Great play by the point on the man advantage. That was Blanchard to filter it into the middle find Ford Fairbank and then Justin Corey number 10 off the rebound on the right leg by Grinwis that's all the goal scoring so far yep. through two periods yeah there's been uh, a lot of action as we saw in the first period uh, the uh, Connecticut Rangers were dominating in the Toronto zone for most of the period and then the last minute or so 
maybe longer that Toronto did pick it up and they and they did start getting some scoring chances. Not really any good shots as it, it only recorded one shot on Hickey in the final first period. But uh, second period was a little bit different. Well, let's see some of that handiwork and the finish of last at the end of the second period by Toronto because you're right, they did start to really pick up and slant the ice in their favor. Chances in front of Hickey, scrums in front of the net, rebound work, and Frasca and Stone right here had a few beauties as this one put right on the crest of Hickey. That's the one he checked so behind him. It was right underneath yep. him. So Toronto has really found their groove in that second period, as you mentioned. Yeah, they have. They, they're putting in the pressure. They're, I don't know if it happened on the bench or with, or, or with the kids themselves, but they just they, they found that extra oomph out there and it's showing. And, and this third period is going to be a very good period to watch. one nothing for Connecticut. One more break and we'll come back. Third period puck drop. The winner going on to the Brick Invitational semifinals right next on A. Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mountain Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment Welcome back inside West Edmonton Mall. Rory McGoran along with Mark Kincaid with 15 minutes remaining in the opening game of playoff action. Final the third period. Born. Yep. Yep. Final third period. We'll see what happens. I'm excited for this myself. I can't imagine what uh, you folks at home are watching. Maybe you have a son or grandson or nephew out there. I teed it up in the uh, second period and then forgot to follow through <laughs> with explaining the overtime rules ah. because... Yep. Before in the round robin, it was three minutes of three on three. If there was no goal, then it was three minutes of two on two. Yep. If there was no goal, then it would go into a three-person shootout. Yep. Now they're going ten minutes of five on five. If no one scores, they'll just keep removing a player from the ice. Then ten minutes of four on four, ten minutes of three on three, wow. ten minutes of two on two. And then if all after that nothing happens, shootout. then you'll get a five-person <laughs> shootout. But the chances of getting down to that are That's quite astronomical. Pretty slim, yeah, but hey. I know the goalies will be happy on that because I know no goalie likes to shoot out in an important game that's right, nonetheless. Absolutely. I think that's exactly the reason why they're doing that. So just in case Toronto tries to tie it up, right now it's one nothing thanks to Justin Corey in his second goal of the tournament. Faceoff not done chin, fairly. Chin strap. Oh, chin strap undone for one of the players. So I saw a neck guard malfunction yesterday. Just would not stay on on the player. That's Look Peter Leiden on the far side there, adjusting his helmet, and he's all ready to go. It'll be Grady Riley against Jack Cross in the faceoff. Having a couple laughs with the far side referee. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I took a puck in the neck, I hit a divot, I fell on the ice. It was quite an entertaining two periods for me. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's always in the action. As Leiden in towards the corner, twisting around. He plays it back up top to Severo. Back down for Leiden. 
Hard off the boards. Toronto gets three guys into the scrum. Jack Cross for Connecticut. Gonna try to move it around the boards. Slips out in front. Toronto will find possession. We were hoping that Toronto was gonna come out with the same gusto they ended the second one. So far, they're yet to find their groove here. Oh, one in the knee now, the official. Well, chalk up another one. Yeah, four or five incidents. A long stretch pass for Fresca. Toe drag oh. and then steered off the puck. Nice play by Del Giacco. Herbert will knock it back in around the boards. Picking it up is Petty. Trying to muster that one out of the zone. Does. Frasca scoops it up. Loses it to Del Giacco again. Out towards center ice. Petty's there. That was Dula. Been some back and forth, side to side hockey. Pond hockey, I think, is what Tarsi was calling it. Jackson Liao going to shovel it back down in behind the net of uh, Brody Grinwis. Space 10 shots. He stopped nine of them. Frasca back down the ice. Wonder how much ice time he's going to log here he's, in the final 13 minutes. Yep, and he's still on there. Hard around the boards. Petty now up for Hunter. Bounced back inside the zone. Latanzio trying to clear. He can't. Hunter steers free at center. Fresca, nice little play to nice clear move. free to Beckham Hunter. Now Fresca will change. Hunter the lone forecheck. Turned around. Brought back out. This is Zollinger in across center. Sends it in. McKenzie in after it. Back for it is Pogi. Stripped of the puck. Both teams vying for that position no and control. No shots on net for nope. either side here in this third period. As Fraser will go back across to Severo. Up the wing. Looking to pot that one in deep was Fairbank. Couldn't do it. They'll try the near side of the ice. Now breaking it in is Colosimo. Lettieri back forth. The defenseman shakes off the forecheck. Goes around the net to Pogi. Calling for it's Nico Hughes. He'll get it. Touch pass to Perez. Walks around Fairbank. Perez will follow it up onside our pro hockey as Perez, great shift for him, drives it all the way down low. Now helped out and scooped up by Nico Hughes. Hughes along the half wall, taken off the puck. And here comes Connecticut. One on four, it looks like. Lifting it high and into the air. Right off the pad and a rebound chance. Lands right back onto Connecticut, onto Peter Leiden, still with it. He gets knocked down to the ice. Loose puck, scooped up. There's Herbert. Lost it. Perez. Outside the zone, cross center. We'll backhand this one right on top of the net of Hickey. Alex to play it into the corner. Players get tied up. That's Jessup for Connecticut. And Hunter, I believe, for pro hockey. Riley's into the mix. Toronto doing a good job of, of back checking, I've noticed. Like, mm -hmm. they, if the puck gets by them, they just don't stand there and oh well. They dig in and they hustle back. Absolutely. Uh, near turnover there, almost for Stone. Instead, it's forced back the other way. Leiden trying to fly down the left wing. And a great little diving play there to close up all lanes, passing and shooting as Leiden got in a little too tight. Excellent defensive move there. Now Jack Cross battling. He's got Herbert as well with them. Centering pass, but all the way to the point. Jessup doesn't like a lane towards the net, so rolls it around the boards. Herbert in the corner, blocked by Riley. Twisting and turning is Preston Herbert. Now cross, out, line, and backhand shot blocked. Loose puck cleared away by Toronto. Back pedaling out of the defenseman. Toronto going for a line change, so it's only one man in, and a wrist shot blocked by Jessup. Long lead pass, chipped back in by Blanchard. Four minutes gone here in the final frame. 10-10 now, the shot's shots all even Shots on up. net, I was just looking at that. All even up now for shots. Back towards the blue line. D to D, sent in there by Drew Frazier. Back for it goes Pogi. Rims it around the boards, Toronto. Nice little play on the blue line, but Ooh, good getting back steal. in the way was Jackson Liao. Liao still with it. Runs into Latanzio. Gula is also in there for pro hockey. Leo, I've noticed, is a good little player in the corners. He's gritty. Back around the net here of Grinwich. Gula will go to Bogey. Took a look at Frasca. Didn't feed it. Elects to go far side to Gabe Stone. Knocks it out to center ice. Now D to D. Sent back out by Severo. Hunnison after it. Bogey trying to turn it around. Severo, the defenseman, jumps in. He's got a two-on-one. Man in front, pass coming, scores! Now there's Grayson McKenzie. 
Thought he scored the first one. Ended up with Corey. Well, Mackenzie's got one <laughs> yep, now. It's 2 nothing. Now. That's all his. 2 nothing now. Wow. A lot of back and forth. No real shots. Everyone just, it was like a chess game. They're maneuvering each other. Trying to get in the right position. Ready to pounce. Well, we're going to get our producer extraordinaire here to pull that highlight because you see a loose puck that st settles in just inside the zone. And how about the play from Charlie Severo, the defenseman, to recognize that, see that the Toronto Pro Hockey was kind of caught flat-footed. He jumped on the loose puck, drove right to the net, and then found McKenzie on the back door. Tap it in, and 2-0 lead here for Connecticut. All the way around the net is Toronto. Trying to counter right away. Nico Hughes lets it go to the point. Hatch, shot, flutters towards the slot. Blocked away. And now cleared away as McKenzie couldn't get it outside the zone. Great hold. Long distance wrist shot from the board. Rolled wide. Hatch will backhand it down the wall. Off the boards, Del Giacco. Now McKenzie now is second goal of the game, or probably second goal of the tournament. And Nicholas Huniston is picking up the secondary assist. Of course, Severo, we mentioned, with the primary assist on the goal by McKenzie. Here goes Salvador, or pardon me, Santino Perez. Back into the corner. Played down low by Grant. Perez after it. Up near side is Herbert. Bounces it back in the attacking zone. 8.50 left here in the game is Connecticut. Trying to go back-to-back -back championships. Winner of this will play later today at 5.30. Shot coming there oh. from Liao. And that one, big save by Grinwis. All the way down the ice, and this one looks like it's going to be icing. And it is against Toronto Pro Hockey. Pressure is on now. Toronto has two goals to make up. And in a game like this, that's a tough one to do, but it can be done, absolutely. There's lots of game left. Tons of time. 8.26, 12.10, now the shot's on goal for Connecticut. I believe we got that goal. Quickly throw it up. As you'll see, Severo here on the bottom of your screen, 21, the puck settles in, he recognizes it, jumps it on, and then back door to McKenzie. And Grinwis, again, nothing right he can there. do about that. Yep. But that play created by Charlie Severo. Justin Corey down low as Toronto, they'll send it up. Frasca couldn't connect with it. Not gonna be icing though as Riley cross center, Frasca now. As battling in the corner, three from Connecticut, two from Toronto. And poked out of the zone by Corey. No, they did hold by Petty. Brought back out, here comes Liao. They'll go to Corey. Justin Corey wide, walks by Petty, sent it all the way back down low. 7.45 remaining in the game. Inside the attacking zone, here's Gabe Stone rolling it. Down behind the net of Hickey, Austin Jessup will pick it up. He'll go far side, knocked out by McKenzie, sent right back in by Gula, but didn't get it deep. McKenzie back out, Gula straddling his own blue line, D to D. Quickly sent back up the ice by Ryan Lozon. Twisting and turning is Del Giacco. Around the net. Hard pass to the defenseman in Jessup. He'll quickly move it up the left wing boards. Knocked in by Corey. Oh. A little bit of a collision there, but Connecticut will get that line change in for some fuel as we near the seven minute mark. Knocked out to center. Leiden up for cross. Whips it right on top of the net of Grinwis. Paddled away onto the defenseman in Gula. Near side, Nico Hughes trying to chip it around Frazier. Second opportunity did, but Leiden the only one there. He's able to spin it back up ice. Herbert pokes it to Cross, who then does the rest of the work and knocks it back down. Lozon now behind the net. He'll go off the far side wall. Sent out by Beckham Hunter. Around the boards. On it, Ryan Lozon for pro hockey. Lozon in the corner, watched. Around the net, Gula, it's Connecticut. Trying to keep that pressure down low behind Brody Grinwis. Yeah, Rangers are just shutting down every uh, chance that uh, pro, pro hockey tries to get going. They 
They want to get going in neutral zone. And Connecticut, no, they just shut them down. So they dump it in, they go for a change. Frazier around the wall. Quickly played back up along the boards. Here's Herbert, and just like that, they're out of the zone again. Great cross ice pass as he finds McKenzie, and then he got a little bit tripped up with. Or was that Leiden? Pardon me, yes, it was Leiden. Couldn't get the shot off. Back comes Toronto. Here's Perez breaking down the right wing, stone towards the net. Perez stops up the trailer. It's Frasca. Perez shoots oh. and blocked. Frasca might have had a look there if that pass came across. Yep, he was ready. He was waiting. As it bounces outside of the zone and back forward is Hatch. Perez. Here, Frasca now. Runs into Severo. Perez took a little bit too too uh, long to set up that shot. If he would have either passed or, or, or gave a shot, he would have got a little bit more opportunity there. Jessup sends it right back in. Pogi on it. Back into his own zone. D to D. Gula. Barbie Hatch off the boards. Frasca got a piece of it. It'll negate the icing. It'll also roll right on top of the goaltender. Turned around. Jessup as we got five minutes left here in the game. Toronto trailing by two. And this one's going to be icing against Connecticut. So an offensive zone draw coming from Toronto. Yep. And we'll also yeah. keep a look. Probably not quite yet with 4.55, but we'll see how aggressive Lindsey Hofford wants to be down by two and when he wants to maybe give a chance about pulling Brody Grinwis. Yeah, and yep, get that extra attacker out on the ice. We'll see Three what happens. minute mark maybe would be my guess. Yeah, yeah. Riley on the draw, offensive for Toronto. I believe McKenzie it is, yes. As McKenzie wins it back for Connecticut. Quick move, D to D, now up the wall. A Little bit of a gaff as a guy catches an edge. That was Colosimo, unable to clear it. Colosimo second opportunity to the line, held in Gula. His pass, he looked for Brooks, but it was just a little bit behind him. Del Giaco, got taken down, followed up. Colosimo drives it back out to center. Petty finds it, whips it right back in. A bouncing one on top of Hickey, and Some, he'll steer it away. Sometimes those uh, those high bouncy ones are the trickiest, hardest shots for goalies to get in front of and stop. All the way back into the Toronto Pro Hockey Zone. Petty quickly up to Nico Hughes. Turn over, over though, Colosimo shot stopped by Grinwis. Grinwis with a great save there. Had to be paying attention as a quick steal and Turn around and a shot opportunity. 4-11 left here in regulation. 14-12, the shot's on goal. It's been Hickey on the other side, stopping all 12 shots of Toronto's. Jack oh. Cross back on the face. Oh, sorry, Mark, go ahead. Although we have a uh, large crowd here, they're fairly quiet. They, I thought they were going to be a lot louder, but. 10-50 morning game, maybe give them to the 5-30 yep. game. And yep, that's right. <laughs> As Frazier at center ice. Can't imagine how the 7.30 game was Ooh. that you called. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a couple of those later in the week with the 2012 yeah. birth years. Yeah, you can hear the crickets, I think, <laughs> on those ones. Frasca now works it towards the net. Frasca oh. shoots and rolls it wide. Oh. Stone on it. Frasca, he's just been trying and trying and trying. Up towards the near side. It'll be Herbert. He'll bring it out. Trying to get around Pogi. Just rolls it back down low. It'll bank off the back wall. Hatch. Well, on the far side, but can't clear. Oh, Second heads opportunity. Up, Dad. I think that one did hit a play. Yep. Yeah, it did. So the referees recognize that yep. and will blow it down. As Dad shaking his hand there <laughs> a little bit, smarted a bit. Just another reminder, folks: keep your hands and uh, <laughs> inside the vehicle. Inside the vehicle <laughs> or the ride, the <laughs> roller coaster ride. Keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle. Three twenty-nine remaining. Liao on the faceoff against Latanzio. Toronto to the line, not out, sent down low. Hatch back for it. He's got Bogey on the other side. We'll give him a poke to him. Brooks, Liao, good job holding that one in. Oh, oh, Incidental miss. contact there between two players behind the play, but it actually might spring Hunter, and they're trying to hit Look him. A bouncing that. play and just rolls too far. You see that one kind of breaking down as Hunter <laughs> got lost behind yeah, the defense yeah. and looked for a little alley-oop toss but couldn't hit him. And then Hickey once again out playing that puck. Back for Hunter, slap shot stopped by Hickey. Not many goalies will come that far out to play that puck. Yeah, Hickey's been 
really good tonight. First time I've had a chance to see him, and no doubt about it, he's the go-to guy for Connecticut here. 2.38 remaining in the game, down by two is Toronto. Trying to bounce it out is Lettieri. There's Perez, far side. Couldn't break it in. Could not get in once again. And now back to the way, stripped of the puck. How about the back check for Toronto? Unable to get the puck through though is Frasca. That defense is just a machine mm -hmm. on that Connecticut yeah, they are team. There's Ford Fairback, sends it back in. Oh. Grinwich hasn't had opportunity to maybe head towards the bench for the extra attacker. We now got two minutes remaining. Still a two goal lead here for Connecticut. Frasca going to try to change that. Frasca wide down the right wing. Backhand shot. Stop. Rebound chance. They score. Santino Perez as a loose puck settles on the near side. Bangs home the rebound. And we got a one goal game. Look at that. With uh, 151 left to go in the third period. Toronto makes good and gets one in the back of the net. Finally past Hickey. Hickey has been lights out so far, but they might have found the answer. Two minutes left. Do you think they'll pull Grinwis? I, I think he'll come out eventually, but that is now an eternity of time for Toronto Pro Hockey. And who created it? We knew he had the opportunity. He's just with a little bit snake bitten. But Frasca again creating that play. Firing an awkward backhand high, handcuffing Hickey. Wasn't able to control the rebound. It landed right beside him. And then Santino Perez knocks it home. As Petty. We got a one goal game here. Toronto trying to force overtime. Perez back into the attacking zone. Unable to get around the defenseman in Severo. Severo back the other way. We'll just lay it right on top of Grinwis. Paddled down, leaves it for the defenseman in Pogi. 120 remaining. Long stretch pass will find Brooks. Turned over Jessup. And he'll lead Blanchard outside the zone. Right under the stick of Pogi. Far side, Stone now on it. Grinwis still in the net. Coaches aren't even looking at him, so I think they're leaving him right where he is. One minute. Oh, no, now they're yelling at him. One minute left here in the period. Puck down deep into the Toronto zone. Pogi fanned on the clearing attempt. Blanchard up the wing. Now is Stone. Stone to Here Latanzio. He Here goes Grinwis. Empty net, six on five. Latanzio shoots, blocker save. Up and behind the net. Wow, that was uh, as close as you can get. As it rolls all the way down, hustling back for it is Frasca. 30 seconds remaining. Cutting in, look at Frasca go as Gianni Frasca enters the zone down the right wing. Another backhand, this one rolls wide in towards the corner. 20 seconds as a scrum ensues. Played back up towards the line. Great block there by Riley to keep it in. Another opportunity to clear. Riley holds and this one gets out of the zone. Toronto's got to check up. They only got nine seconds left as Pogi across to Hatch. Five seconds left. Up the ice, and not enough time. Latanzio trying to get towards the net, and the final buzzer will sound. It is the Connecticut Junior Rangers with a one-goal victory, 2-1, to one, and they will be heading to the Brick Invitational semifinals at 5.30. What an exciting game down to the wire, just like we predicted. Just like we had thought, that's what happens in this playoff hockey. Uh, although Connecticut did, you know, they're a little bit more organized. The, the passing was bang on, defense was light out for Connecticut. Yeah, I think the ability to get the puck out of their zone with that puck moving in mobile defense could have been one of the big difference makers in this game. Nonetheless, though, the shots ended up being in favor of Toronto Pro Hockey, 15-14. Yep. to 14, Although James Hickey on the side stops 14 of those 15 shots, and it's a 2-1 to one victory for the Connecticut Junior Rangers. Don't go anywhere on ASTV. At 12.30 time, we're gonna have the team Brick Alberta take on Toronto Bulldogs. And of course, for Toronto Pro Hockey, an exceptional tournament as they came out and snuck into the playoffs in that final game of, of yesterday, the final round robin day. Got enough points to get in in a great performance against Pennsylvania. And then tonight, almost at the dying seconds, they're trying to get back into a tie. But defending champions are moving on. And good for them. They are still in the running. 
to hold up their as we're getting ready to get the three-star presentation. One, two, three. This will get through a little period scoring summary now, and I'll allow you to go interview the three will, stars. I will go do the three stars. I will be back again shortly. And a two-to-one victory for the Connecticut Junior Rangers. The last time this tournament was held, of course, prior to COVID, 2019, they were victorious. Hanging banner there along the rafters of West Edmonton Mall Arena. And right now they've kept the hopes alive that they're gonna go back to back champions. It all started in the first period where Justin Corey on the power play at three minutes and seven seconds into the first period from Ford Fairbank, or Ford Fairback, pardon me, and Sebastian Blanchard. That made it one nothing for Connecticut. For Corey, it was his second goal of the tournament and his sixth point for Ford Fairback. He picks up his first assist and third point of the tournament. And for Sebastian Blanchard, that's his fifth point and third assist of the tournament. one nothing for Connecticut. And that lasted all the way into the third period where Connecticut then doubled the lead. It was Grayson McKenzie on a beautiful backdoor pass and a play by Charlie Severo, Nicholas Huniston picking up the secondary assist on the second goal. So Hunnison with his third point of the tournament. You got McKenzie with his third point and second goal and Charlie Severo picks up assist number four on the tournament to give Connecticut Junior Hockey a two nothing lead. Toronto Pro Hockey wasn't going away though as at 151 left in the third period, Santino Perez. Banged home a rebound from Gianni Frasca. Holden Gula picked up the secondary assist, but it just wasn't enough as they couldn't get that second goal past the goaltender in Hickey. As for Perez, that's goal number three. Frasca picks up point number seven in the tournament. Five, four goals, three assists for Gianni Frasca. And Holden Gula, number 19, with his third point. Your goaltender's in the matchup. For Toronto Pro Hockey, it was Brody Gr Grinwis, pardon me. And Brody Grinwis stopped 12 of 14 shots on the other side. It was James Hickey stopping 14 of 15. So Charlie Severo picking up the third star of the game. And what a play it was that created that game-winning goal scored by Grayson McKenzie. And James Hickey of Connecticut getting the first star of the game. The goaltender, 14 of 15. That'll improve his shots as he came into this game 39 of 43. As we're getting ready for Mark Kincaid to be joined by a couple members of the three stars. So 12.30, we're going to have the next semifinal. And now we'll head down to Mark, who's ready with the three stars. All right, here we are, Santino Perez with the one and only goal from Toronto. You guys played your hearts out. You had a great tournament. What does it feel like to be here playing, making it playoffs? What are your thoughts of that? It feels great. It's um, um, we did it all together, my teammates. We did great, and it's one in a lifetime. So it was a great experience. Absolutely. You're going home now, but that's okay. That's you guys came and played your hearts out just to be at this tournament, have your name up on that wall downstairs. How does that feel? It feels great. It's an honor. So um, I'm sure you've been asked this before, but but who inspires you when you're out on the ice? Um, Nazem Kadri. Good choice. And is there anyone you want to give a shout out to while you're here? My family, my dad, my mom, my my cousins, my grandma, and my brother, and my sister. Good job, good job. Well, okay, Santino, have a safe trip home. I'm glad to have met you. Glad you're on the show. Take care, and we'll see you again. We'll, I'm sure we'll see your name out there on uh, on the hockey world in the future. All right, bye for now. All right, next up we got Charlie Severo. Charlie, I have had out here interviewed before. Yeah, well, you are just uh, you're a machine out there. We watch you. 
No, it was a tough choice between you and Jessup. Jessup, I'll give a shout out to him. He he was a great defender, but you were there and made that that awesome awesome play. They just played so good out there. So, what are your thoughts of the game? Um, I thought we played well. Um, our second period was kind of sloppy. Um, we had our shots on net. Hickey was uh, amazing in goal. Um, I thought we just played well, really, in the third. That was our style. Hey, and once again, I'll ask you, who, uh, who inspires you when you're on your ice? Uh, my brothers and my parents. And is there anyone you want to give a shout-out back home or anywhere while you're on TV here? Um, ag also, again, my brothers um, <laughs> and uh, the boys. Okay, well, thank you, Charlie. Good luck in the next round. Get rested, hydrated, and get ready to go again. Thanks, thanks for coming on. All right, and for that last stop, wow, lights out goaltender. I tell you, just unbelievable. Ah, I just got to get my papers right here. I just don't want to mix up names. James Hickey. So, what are your thoughts about this last game? Uh, I thought we played uh, really good. Uh, my team just just going hard and scoring goals for us for me. Yeah. yeah, they they did a very good job of protecting you. Very good defense in front of you, which every goaltender wants. So, uh, who inspires you when you're out on the ice and you're in the net? Uh, Spencer Knight. He's my favorite goalie. Yeah. And is there anyone that you want to give a shout out to while you're here on TV? Yeah, uh, my family and my teammates. So, any final thoughts at all for the rest of the tournament or the rest of the teams? Let's go, CJR. <laughs> All right. Thanks, James. All right. That is it for the three stars, and Rory and I will be back for the next game. We'll talk to you soon.